uh, just explain to us how you're toughening up uh, the legislation then around these issues. Well, I'm very excited to be able to say that we have announced to police and crime commissioners across the whole nation that we're spending £39 million. And that's really going to change the lives of people who have been stalked. People are in terror. These are vile crimes. Domestic abuse, including stalking, really affects everybody's lives. And we're spending a lot of money to help prevent it. Who, who's doing the stalking, Sarah? Because I often look at this and I think um, we could think it's people with, uh, you know, really evil intentions and whatever, or it's people who are just mentally disturbed. And I think a lot of them are just mentally disturbed. So it's not just your budget will be going and preventing them. Who's then going to look after them and retrain these people in the ways of the world? Well, it's a wide section of the population, and sometimes people aren't mentally disturbed. They're just obsessive, or they think they're in love. But yes, they do have psychological problems, a lot of these people, which is why we're spending part of this money to implement training, specialist training for police officers, but also psychologists who will disrupt and prevent that sort of behaviour. Some of the projects that we've run, um, like the DRIVE project we've been doing for seven years, it's up to 80% effective. You can work with a proportion of this sort of obsession personality and it's about saving people and stopping terror these victims really feel terror within their own homes and are frightened to go out at times so it's specialist intervention I'm so pleased the government are doing this uh, just explain then exactly how that specialist intervention will be distributed because we know there's always a shortage of, of officers on the beat you say there's going to be some psychologist help as well I mean how many people are we talking because we're seeing these crimes increase let's not pretend we're not well, we're going to have 50 different projects funded, and each of those projects will have multiple people. Some will be, uh, well, the majority will be police officers and psychologists, and there's extra training to make sure we get the right sort of people working in this field. And we also work in conjunction with other organisations, other stakeholders, social services, proper training for social workers, as well as police officers. And we've developed a new tool to enable police officers, particularly the newer ones who need training, who are coming. And don't forget the government's uh, actually achieve the committed promise for 20,000 new police officers. They need specialist training and we're rolling that out. So the tool that we have will help people spot some of this abuse because sometimes it's not thoroughly obvious and members of the public might think that neighbour isn't a stalker when actually we know from that behaviour that they are a stalker. So uh, a lot of work's been done. What else do you know from work that has been carried out? I mean, is there anything that you do that you know uh, this is money well spent, this change happens, because a lot of these people are repeat offenders? <laughs> Well, that's why the most serious repeat offenders are going to be on the Violent and Sexual Offenders Register and more closely monitored on a day-to-day -day basis. I've had the privilege of visiting several of these schemes, like the Drive Project in Hampshire, with Donna Jones, who's the local police and crime commissioner there. What the police officers do is they disrupt and they prevent. They turn up, they do home visits, they turn up unexpectedly. And there are some rules now whereby um, the most serious offenders can be forced to go on um, special courses where they learn learn about their behaviour. And as I mentioned earlier, some of these can be 75 to 80 percent successful. So there is academic research and it's been proved to work. You can disrupt this sort of behaviour. Um, Sarah Dines, can I ask you what you made of the Archbishop of Canterbury's intervention on the illegal immigration bill yesterday? He described it as morally unacceptable. Do you agree? Well, I do respect, uh, I respect it very much. And the House of Lords is a really precious, important part of our constitution. However, uh, with the greatest respect, I don't agree with what he said. I just don't think it is moral to allow people such as traffickers to bring people, including children, across the channel, risking their lives for money. I mean, that's what it is. And that's where the immorality lies. Right, but there, there wouldn't be this problem with the channel, would there, if there were safe and legal routes for people to get into this country to then uh, seek asylum? There are safe and legal routes. We've been a very, very generous country. Since 2015, we've offered homes to 500,000 immigrants who have sought sanctuary in this country. We are a kind country, but what we can't do is to allow the criminal gangs to usurp the proper process. We want people to come here when they need help, not because they may be asylum shopping, as the Migration Minister said yesterday.
So with the greatest respect, I don't agree with him. Uh, I think we're doing the right thing. It was passed by the House of Commons by a large majority, and this is what the people want. So we do listen to the House of Lords, but with the greatest respect, I disagree on where the morality lies on this one. Uh, what about the, the failure to repeal Brexit laws? Labour Party describing it this morning as an embarrassing U-turn. Well, uh, Sir Keir Starmer knows all about embarrassing U-turns. It's not quite a U-turn. It's a more calculated, calm way of getting rid of some of these laws. We don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We need to make sure we get rid of those laws which we don't need, and we keep some which are compatible with what we want to do in this country. So the Prime Minister has managed to get rid of about 800 so far, and I know that each government department is working incredibly hard, including the Home Office, including me, to look at exactly what we need to keep and what needs to go. So I don't agree with, uh, agree with Sir Keir Starmer. That won't surprise you. No. But, but do you think there are problems within the civil service and ministers? I mean, some people are describing it as virtually all-out war. You know, Kemi Badnock blaming this on the blob on Whitehall. <laughs> I don't think it's all out war. It's just a very huge task. We're changing our constitutional arrangements by leaving, and I fully support Brexit. What we need to do is keep the best, but get rid of all the rest that we don't need. And we're doing that in a proper way. There is a framework to this. It's not all made up, as Sir Keir Starmer would think. We've been working incredibly hard on this, and I know ministers are taking a lot of time. Kemi Badnock has pointed out it is a huge job. We have to reverse what's been years of, of just accepting laws from uh, another institution without any democratic say. So I'm pleased the government is doing this in a proper, measured, thorough way. Well, Sarah Dines, I reckon anyone who declared war on you would know all about it. I think they'd live to regret it. You're full of energy. You're full of enthusiasm there. We wish you all the best for what you're trying to do, uh, taking care of stalkers and domestic abusers, uh, an awful and, and too often silent problem within the country. Thanks for explaining that to us. Thank you very much indeed and good luck.